All righty. Hello, everyone. I'm Kendra Von Esch. We have my little puppy below us, so she might get in the picture. I'm not sure. And my dear friend, Wendy, we just spent the last five days together down in Tennessee, laying out at the pool. It was so fun. I have my lips all cracked. You might be able to see a little <laughs> blue mark there. And I think I'm going to peel all over my face. Of course, she's Italian. She's not going to have that happen to her. But I wanted to bring Wendy on because she is introducing her book very soon. And all of you may know her, as I mention her quite often. She was attacked by a witch. She had spells cast on her, and I will stop there as a little teaser, but I just want to let you know how we met. So when I was just getting into my ministry, I started going to daily mass, and I would see this chick <laughs> walk down the side every single mass in this green jacket, because yeah. I think it was a little bit cold, it was and... I'm like, look at that hair that she has. And you're like, how tall? Probably 4'10 now. 4'10 now. She's shrinking, as she says. And I'm like, I've got to hand her my book. This was a Holy Spirit thing. And I'm so glad that I listened because we had become really great friends. And I don't know what I'd do without her. Mm -hmm. So on that note, I just want Wendy to tell us a little bit about your journey in the faith. <laughs> and is she biting you? Yes. <laughs> I have my spray. Yep. No. <laughs> this was Cherie's idea. She passed yeah, this, yeah. this along. It's not slapping your dog, so but it does it does make them think. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna give this to you. Tell me a little bit about your Catholic journey. So I was raised Catholic. We went to mass every week, no matter what. <laughs> always, 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 always. That's all awesome. you know, it didn't matter. Um and when I left home, I got married really young. I was nineteen, he was twenty one, and I stopped going to mass for about six months. That's uh, it? Six months. That oh was it. Oh, my gosh. I was lonely. I was, I was lonely. I was sad. I was depressed. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, I didn't know what was wrong with me. And finally, I thought, you need to go back to church. And so I did. I didn't want to go by myself, but, but he wasn't going to go. So oh, I had to go gotcha. by myself. You know what I mean? He wasn't Catholic. Did that so, fill your loneliness when you went back? I would say it helped, you know. It definitely helped. I wasn't as depressed, that's for sure. Well, that's there was, a, there, was a, there was like an emptiness, right? Because God fills you, you know? Um, so, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, uh, we had two kids, and I kind of went to Mass when I felt like it. I mean, I went to Mass often, but if, but if I was tired, I was like, oh, I'm not going to go today, you know? Um, and then I met this, 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 a really good friend of mine. And she invited me to go to daily mass. And I was like, daily mass? Like, what are <laughs> I didn't you even know there talking was such about? A yeah, like, what do you mean you're going to master in the week? You know, <laughs> it was hysterical. And I was like, eh, I don't know. You know, I was working out at the health club in the morning. And I was like, well, I got to give that up then if I'm going to go to mass, you know? So eventually I did. I went um, and I kept going. Kept I just, going. I just kept going. Uh, and my husband thought I was crazy. Um, but I just kept going because so I liked it. what age were you when you did that? I was in my, probably my early 30s. Early 30s. And how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I'm 59. So you went every single day. Of course, we know that there will be days here and there. Right, here and there out. that you don't go, yeah. But that's pretty much the start of your daily mass going. Yeah, once I started going, I, I did. I went. I just, so cool. I just went every day. You yeah. know, and, and I was searching for God. I was searching for God. And that was important to me. And now I know that. <laughs> so we would go to the mass and she, after mass, would run to adoration. I mean, just so that she would get her spot in the back. This chick moves a lot. She, Ooh, dropped her thing. Oh, it's okay. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll take it back. So she goes to adoration and mass. So it's not just a 30 minute dedication for her she sits for an hour with Jesus and yes she would run out of that room so that she could get her seat in the back because she does move around a lot and she doesn't want to you know bother anyone in front of her but I do move around a lot. yeah it's so cool it's really kind of funny I can't have a conversation with her without doing a couple things so <laughs> don't be sidetracked by that okay so the big thing that we all want to know is tell us a little bit about this witch and how you got involved with it. Because I think that everyone, no matter whether you're Catholic or not, you have to keep your eye out for some of these things that none of us may have even noticed is happening to right. us. So I right. will I'll let you take that one. Okay. Wait, time out. My dog's got 
an entire napkin shredded on the ground. Oh, oh no. What are you doing? Okay. So, whew. I actually went to Mass for uh, three years before I met this person. And at that time, there were a lot of uh, Magigoria uh, conferences, like retreats, okay? And so I went to one, and I saw my friend, and she was standing there with this, this woman that I didn't know. And I was like, oh, I wonder who she's talking to. And I just walked past. I didn't interrupt them or anything. I just went on my merry little way. Was that her? Um, yes, she it was, was her. She was at she wasn't in Med. This was a Medjugorje conference. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Actually, at the time, it was through the Chicago Marian Conference. Um, and so I think that's where they find their little victims. You know, they, they, they do go to Mass. They do go to those things, and they look for people, um, I guess, either to recruit or to hurt. Wow. Okay? That's what I think. So not long after that, uh, my girlfriend, my friend friend that she was speaking with, said, hey, I'm going to go to this prayer group. Do you want to come? And I was like, a prayer group? Like, I don't know. I never did that before. I mean, I was Catholic my whole life, but, like, I wasn't praying the rosary every day. I wasn't, you know what I mean? And yeah. even, even after I was going to Mass oh, every hey, day. stop eating her foot. Sorry. Yeah. Even after I was going to Mass every single day. I wasn't praying the rosary every day. I was I was in a learning stage, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, totally. Uh, was, which is which is are. actually why I went to this prayer group. Even though I thought it was weird. I thought it was weird. I was like, I don't know, man. Catholics don't do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. That was totally what I thought. And so I um I said, "Fine, I'll go." And we just went over to her house, and it was like five of us. And you know, we prayed the rosary, but she kind of let it. She let it, um, and she had all these, like, extra prayers that, like, intentions, you know, and then she'd go in the, around the room and she'd say, do you have any intentions? And I would be like, I'm not saying nothing out loud. Like, I don't Really? So you didn't? Oh, yeah. I was, I was not comfortable. Well, co I was not comfortable at all with that. It, I, eventually I did, but in the beginning I was like, no, no, you know. So, um... Oddly, my friends fell away. Stop. Sorry, my dog is playing by the lights. If you can hear noise in the background. She's so cute. I know. It's okay. I She's know. just a little puppy. I it's know. like a little baby running around. Uh, but noisy and a biter one. So okay, she... What the heck was I just saying? Uh, she asked for Watch intentions. Out. Nope. Hey, don't bite her. <laughs> okay. Sorry, everyone. She's a little puppy. This is life. This is what we've been yeah. doing for the past five days. <laughs> it is, actually. Yeah. You know. So she asked me for intentions, and you weren't comfortable with that, and... She right, had extra right. prayers at the end. She had extra prayers really in the beginning, like, I'm going to pray for this prayer. And then she would go to each person and she would say, do you have any intentions? And in the beginning, like I said, I was like, no, I didn't have any real intentions. I kind of said them in my head, like, like most Catholics do, right? Right. Um, so my friends fell away uh, and I continued to go because I, I just thought that she was more knowledgeable than me and I could learn something from her. And so... Um, Take note, everyone. I think we've all seen some people that we maybe want to be like or we think they're so holy. Yeah. And maybe, just maybe, they're not. Right. She just, she... Hey, come here. She yeah. didn't go to Mass every day. She told us that she went to a different church. No. And no. every now and then she would show up at the church that we went to. Um, oh. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, she had to put on the face. Right. You know what You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, I kept praying with her. And um, some really weird stuff started happening to me. I started to get um, anxiety, depression. Um, like those are broad words. What like what did it mean like, to you in your life? Like my entire personality changed. I went from no, being she's chewing the cord. Hold on. <laughs> hey, our lights do not. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Maybe you can sit with me. All right. Okay. So I went from being a, a, a pretty outgoing uh, uh, person to oh yeah to silent, uh, afraid, uh, sad, confused. Confusion was because it didn't make any sense to me how what was happening to me. I was in my thirties. Wow, and you had kids. 30s. How old were your kids? Oh, my kids were little at the time. It was pretty little. She was only like seven. Six or seven, eight, somewhere in there. It's about four years older than her, not quite. Um, so they were little. They were in school. 
I didn't work. I was raising my kids, you know? Yeah. Um, Praise God for that. So I just changed. And I kept thinking, what is wrong with me? You know, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know what was wrong yeah. with me. Did your um, husband notice that something was going on? Not really. Really? I mean, he's working. He's busy. Yeah. He's yeah. working. He's busy. You know, the kids were too little. And I never said any of the things that were happening to me. You know what I mean? Um, eventually, I started having a very difficult time sleeping. And that's a huge sign. I'm just going to tell you all that's a very, very big sign. How if come? you start feeling... Uh, because somehow they. No! Oh, no, 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 no. Uh oh. Pee pee. <laughs> oh. You know what? I was thinking about that. Hang on. No. All right. All right. Do you keep want me? Oh, you want me to keep yeah. going? Okay. She's cracking me up. Okay. So now I have to remember what I said. If you start having, you know, uh, sleeping problems. That's a sign. That's a definite sign that something's wrong. Something's going on. I think that I probably didn't sleep uh, for about a year and a half. And when I say not sleep, I mean, I really didn't sleep. I had little tiny moments of sleep, uh, which meant I was extremely tired all of the time. Uh, I think that added to the confusion, uh, to the depression. Um, I just didn't understand what was wrong with me. Um, and it took a while for me to figure out that it was demonic. Now I did sleep, um, but I would have really bad nightmares that would wake me up. Demonic nightmares. Um, it was absolutely not fun at all. Uh, not fun at all. All right. Now you're going to fill me in, which is going to be real. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just saying that I didn't sleep for about a year and a half and that when I did sleep, I had I had a lot of nightmares. Uh, there were demonic things happening in my house. Um, what kind of nightmares did you have? They were demonic nightmares. Uh, they were yeah. they were scary, you know, like scary nightmares, you know, of demons or, uh, gosh, what, what did they look like? I'm so sorry, but what did they look like? Yeah, when you see demons. I don't think I've ever they, seen a demon. Well, I years. described one of the dreams in my book, but they looked they looked kind of like gargoyles. Honestly, they did. Really? Um, yeah, they looked like gargoyles. Some were big, some were small. Uh, I saw a witch once. Um, she was rocking. Yeah, she was on a she was on a porch. It was dark, and she was on a porch, and she was rocking in a rocking chair. Okay, we just had to edit it for a minute. The puppy was out of control. Okay, we were talking about the witch, and I wanted to see. Did she look like the Wicked Witch of the West or no. on the movies? You just said she was a little old lady? She was a little old lady sitting on a small porch. It was a kind of a creepy little house, and it was dark. Um, this was a long time ago, so there was probably other stuff going around that I really can't remember, but I remember focusing directly on her. And I, it felt weird, and it felt creepy. Um, and it was a dream, right? Yeah. Um but it wasn't like me. It was like they did it to me. Like they, they made me have these dreams all the time. Um, no wonder why you didn't want to fall asleep. I didn't want to fall asleep. I was terrified to fall asleep. I was literally terrified to go to sleep. That's not I a bet. lie. Because every time I did, something, something would happen. And this was a calm dream. This was just an easy one. There was another dream where it was very creepy. And I walked into this house. There was a, it was a weird house. I didn't recognize it at all. And there was stairs going down and I knew I had to go down in the stairs or down the stairs down. And so anyway, when I went to go down the stairs, there was a, a, a gigantic chain. It was like, instead of there being a, a handle that you would hold on to walk down the stairs, it was a giant, here, hold that. Like, it was a giant, like giant thick oh, really? chain like this. And it was moving like, you know, it was going like this and going, and, the, and it was the sound. The sound was very rhythmic and very loud, and it absolutely terrified me. Oh, my gosh. Now, I remember going in the basement, and I, honestly, I don't remember what happened in the basement. I just remember um, that sound was horrible, and I ran up the stairs in the basement and woke up. I would say that all those dreams that I had were meant to create a lot of fear. I was afraid to go to sleep. I was afraid to go to bed. I... How did you I was even so afraid. function? I didn't. 
I, I, I was able to do like, you know, motherly things, clean the house, take care of the kids, you know, get them off to school and stuff, but they would go to school. I would basically uh, spend the day either in a extremely heightened state of anxiety, like all day long. Um, or I would be crying or I'd be like, what in the heck is wrong with me? I actually spent a lot of time when the kids were in school driving to different adoration chapels because at the time, I mean, there's a lot of adoration chapels around us. We can go to adoration anywhere all the time now. But back then they were a little further away. They weren't always 24 hours like they are now. So I would get in my car and I would just go drive to adoration. And in fact, this is an interesting story. One day I knew that there was an adoration chapel, but I didn't know where it was. So I called this witchy chick um witchy chick. <laughs> yeah which i of course i didn't know that at the time and i called her husband answered the phone. i was asking him where the adoration chapel was and he told me where it was and so i went and when i got there he was Sorry, actually people. in the adoration chapel when i got there i was always uncomfortable around him really always so when i went there to go to the adoration chapel which was pretty far from my house I, I just walked in and I was like, oh my gosh, why is he here? Like, uh, and then I couldn't even rest there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I mean. So were you like with him there, were you like, oh gosh, I hate this guy or this guy rubs me wrong. So everything didn't calm down for you. You weren't sitting there with Jesus. I was still, I was still, yeah, kind of freaking out. Yeah. I was, I was just, I didn't hate him. I just yeah. felt, felt very uncomfortable around him. Very uncomfortable wow. around him. Um, so, I mean, that's just how it was for me. Oh my gosh, you know? I can't even but, believe it. But in, in all of that, if you look at that, I was running to adoration almost every single day. And I, I wasn't able really to rest, but God was working on me that whole time. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? And so, so, so I have to share this with all of you as my dog. <laughs> Eats your things. scapular. Yeah, eats my scapular and gets Jesus and Mary in the, <laughs> on my other chain. Um, I, and when I, you know what happens when I end up catching it in her mouth? I go, you don't, don't chew on Jesus and Mary. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I remember <clears throat> when you sent me a couple of deliverance books because something was going on in my life. And you're like, here, pray these prayers. So she was the one who had the Father Ripperger book. And I yeah. was like, Okay, I'll pray these. I had no idea about spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. I had no idea about deliverance, how to cast out anything. And I wish I did because the first couple of years of my ministry, all I did was cry. All I did was think, Aww. who am I to think I could do this? You know, everyone's holier than me. I don't even know the full faith, blah, blah, blah. blah. I mean, it was horrible. Right. And so when did you find out about deliverance was it close to the end or oh my gosh that's an interesting question um good girl well that's a long story <laughs> because it's the whole story yeah you know what i'm saying so, so maybe you can let's go back. just say let's go back yeah. yeah let's go back and say that for for a long time i knew that something was wrong with me but i didn't know what it was and you've got to understand that i'm a i mean i'm an outgoing person i would talk to anybody anybody you know yeah. it in the grocery store, it doesn't matter. I mean, no doubt. Um, so that changed you. You were, I was quiet. I was always looking over my shoulder. I didn't talk to anybody at, at, at church. Really my friends, that was it. You know, nobody knew ever. Um, but oh my gosh, I didn't, I, I didn't. That's so anyway, so not like her, it's not, but, like, it's not like, but I'm back. I'm back now. <laughs> <laughs> That's really important thing to say. Yeah. Took years, but I'm back. Um, but I keep, I keep thinking, what was I going to say? Um, this was, this was a journey, right? The whole thing was a journey. So for a long time, I didn't know what was wrong with me. And because I was going to mass every day and adoration, I started to think, you know, maybe this is like spiritual, like maybe this is demonic. And I never thought in those terms. I never thought about demons. I never... I mean, I was just a Catholic, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, I was just a Catholic. I just went to church. I mean, I didn't think about demons or anything like that. I just yeah. lived my life, you know. And all of a sudden, I was like, "This is this is like the devil. Like, there's something that's really, really wrong with me." Wow. So that is the beginning of, like you're saying, learning about spiritual warfare because that's really what it was. Um, so, I guess this is in my book, but I'll be very brief about it. Um, we lived in a town 
And my husband, we had gone out with friends and the house next door to them was for sale. And it was further away. Um, not very far, but you know, only like an hour. So anyway, we ended up buying that house and I didn't want to. Even though my house was haunted with demons and my whole life was turned upside down, it was my church. Yeah. I didn't want to leave my church. That was my support. That was my everything. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't have anything else but God. My husband was living his life. My kids were in school. My parents were 45 minutes away, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't telling anybody what was wrong with me. I was just trying to get through each day. So we got to jump back because I'm sure there's people listening saying, you you had demons in your house? We like, had, what happened? I absolutely did. My own time. Well... And again, have to be brief, but um, yeah, there were demons in my house. There were black shadows in my house. Um, there were, uh, like, I had light bulbs explode. Um, I had, uh, I just felt like there was a presence there. I, I didn't feel it. When I felt it, but I knew it. I knew there, there was, a I would be standing at the kitchen sink doing dishes, and I would know that there was something behind me, and I would turn around and nothing was there, uh, but you could feel it. Yeah. You could feel it. So hence the intense anxiety constantly, just constantly. And then didn't your kids start having nightmares too? My daughter did. Um, and she was fine. She started having night terrors. She was perfectly fine. Wow. And one night she said, mommy, mommy, I feel weird. And I mean, my I just flew out of that bed. My eyes opened and I flew out of that bed and I ran over there and I just slept with her all night. Oh. And I immediately, and I didn't really know much about it, but because I was going to church, um, I had the priest come. I'll I had the I'll priest, I had the priest come. I had the priest bless the house. Um, and she was okay after that. I wasn't, really? I wasn't, but she was. Wow. Yeah, I was not, but she was. So when so. did you start, you know, you're going to be moving to a new place, I'm assuming. And when did you start um, kind of figuring this out? I would say out? that was probably about, a, a, mm, I can't high. remember exactly how long. I would say anywhere between a year and a half to two years after I met this woman. And um, <clears throat> there was another, there was another woman that, so if you remember when I said earlier that my friends left and I was there kind of by myself with her. And then another woman came. Um, and we're still friends today. And so anyway, she ended up, both of us ended up leaving that prayer group at the exact same time, but we didn't know because we didn't have our phone numbers or anything. So. Oh yeah. So anyway, um, we, we moved and I went to mass to the most beautiful church you could ever see. It's like a basilica. Mm. And the first time I was there, I saw this woman. And no. I went up to her and she looked at me. She goes, you're not praying with her anymore, are you? And I was like, no, no, I'm not. Oh, I and thought, we, yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you saw the witch. Oh, woman. not the okay. witch, witch, the other girl who's the stopped other going. girl, right? That left. See, so anyway, we exchanged numbers and um, we started talking. And that's when it all came out. And she's telling me that this person's a witch. And I'm like, witches aren't real. What are you talking about? Oh, witches aren't real. Like, totally. Exactly. Like, I didn't believe that witches mm -hmm. were real. I didn't believe it at all. I didn't believe you when you told me all yeah, this. See? Because, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. So, but I knew something was wrong with me. I knew that. And I knew that I had to consider what she was saying was true. And so, um, actually, there was also a priest I had talked to um, after the last night I spent in her house was very terrifying. Um, and I went the next day and I spoke to a priest about it. And he's like, oh, well, she's either filled with pride or she's a witch. Oh. And I was like, a witch? Like, so that, you two know, people two times that. now that had come up. So um, when I moved, it wasn't like the bad things stopped happening. I was still having issues. But those demons stayed at that other house. They, didn't, they didn't, I don't think that they followed me. Wow. I don't think that they could follow me. I don't know. Maybe they could. I, I don't know. But the things that were happening there weren't happening in the new house. But um, I, I just started to seriously investigate how to cure myself. Yeah. Like, I had, and I have to say this too, it was a while back. You guys are really lucky that you have priests that believe in this stuff, that talk about this stuff. Now, I didn't have that. I would go to confession 
Well, one priest told me that I needed to go see a psychiatrist. Wow. That was a rough day. Uh, another priest told me, he goes, you know what? They don't train us in the seminary for these things. He was a new priest. He goes, I, I don't know how to help you. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And so each time I would go into the confessional and I would kind of be like screaming for help, there was no priest that, that could help me. So be grateful that you have priests now that can help you. Yeah. If And there's a lot of them. Yeah. And, you know, I guess all priests aren't all to everyone. You know, <clears throat> like some people don't have spiritual direction capabilities. Right. Some people, you know, are just good administrators and others are really holy men and others know how to work with the spiritual world. And, right. you know, I think it's just become pretty... I mean, you know, Father Ripperger and, you know, Father Rehill and all these other exorcists that are coming out. There. Yeah. I think it's opening people's eyes. And if you cannot see in today how evil it is out there, you know, this is a spiritual war that we are in, no it doubt. Is. No it doubt. Absolutely is. Okay, so what did you Every what day. did you do? Did you look up what a witch was? You know what? I started searching for books, books books on Catholic books or any book that I could find on witchcraft. Um, oh. because it had come up right twice and I'm like, okay, so I, and I found a book actually by a Christian author. His name is Jonas Clark and it was called, um, I think it was called spiritual witchcraft and it has a picture on the front of it of a black widow spider in a web. And I thought I'm buying this book right now. I need to read this book. I'm reading this book. And I did, I read the book and I was like, wow, witches are actually real. Wow. You know, and then I started searching for Catholic information and um, I learned so much. What what year was this? Do you remember? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Man. Okay. Was, was the internet around? Ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I actually got the book off spiritdaily.com, which okay. if you don't know about it, probably everybody does, but check out spiritdaily.com. Yeah, it's cool. Um, and I, I, I read a lot of books. I devoured a lot of books. And, you know, um, I was go still going to Mass every day to the, to the new – the new church and I was feeling a little bit better. You know, and my, my friend and I that prayed there together, um, we helped each other through it. Right. We honestly so did, did. Did we she have each other issues? Did she think that she, she had, had all spells? kinds of issues? She had, she had things happen to her that didn't happen to me and vice versa. You know what I mean? And we were able to talk it all out. Um, wow. Praise God for that. It was really, it was a crazy time. Yeah. It, it, it I think the sleep deprivation was, I hate to say the sleep deprivation, it was all horrible, okay? But the sleep deprivation just made everything so much, so much worse. Yeah. You know, so anyway, long story short, the last uh, time I saw this person um, was really terrible. But I will tell the story I told you the other day, where I had been going to her house for a long time. And um, she never, you know, you know, when someone comes to your house, you say, oh, you want a glass of water? <sighs> never. She never offered you a glass of water. Um, and you'd think if you were going to say the rosary or something, you'd like sit down on a couch or something. No, I, I was sitting on the floor around a table, mm. which at the time was really hard for me because I had some physical problems, you know. So I knew that when I went there, I was just going to be in excruciating pain, you know, and I wasn't going to have anything to drink. <laughs> you know? uh, Got to bring your own. Yeah. yeah. So the last time I went how there. How long did you stay there? <clears throat> I mean, every time that you went, how long was it? It was usually on Wednesday nights, and it was usually from, like, I would say, like, 7.30 to 9.30, something like okay. that. Right. Sometimes it would be longer. Sometimes it would be shorter. Um, uh, and her husband would always be upstairs, and I know he was oh. he was praying against us for sure. My dog just farted. It's going to really smell. <laughs> oh, oh. Just, All right, yes. are we, we're going to cut that. No, right? we're going to keep that. Oh, Lord, <laughs> Jesus. Can you smell it? <laughs> yes, I can smell it. <laughs> That's so bad. You're keeping that. Yeah, why oh my not? gosh. All right. Well, yeah, I might have to get up and walk over there for a few <laughs> I seconds. I know. Isn't it brutal? <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Oh, my gosh. Gotcha. And I tried to take her out to go poop, but she wouldn't. She was just being crazy. Now she's sleeping. Sleeping yes. and farting. Oh, my oh gosh. My okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'll survive. Okay, a little bit. So anyway, what, what the heck was I just saying now that we're talking about Okay, you this? didn't have any water. went from 7.30 to 9.30 oh, and yeah. sometimes even longer. Yeah, and he would be praying against us upstairs. Do I know that for sure? In my heart of hearts, yeah, I know but they that would for be praying sure. upstairs. Yeah, they okay. would because we were always in the basements. We were always in the basement praying, you know. Um, so anyway, the last time I went there was very, very different, and I wrote extensively about that in my book. So I'm not going to talk a lot about it. But what I'm going to say is that I was there, and the first thing she did when I walked in the door was say, "Hey, you want a cookie?" That was bad news for me, man. I'm just going to tell you, I got really 
I had a lot of problems from that. And, and it wasn't uh, just the ingredients. There was probably a curse on it. No, that there cookie. was probably a curse on it. Yeah, there was probably a curse on it. And uh, it took a, it was unpleasant, I must say. Um, and you're, you're just talking like a physical thing from eating the cookie or every- It was physical. I started having a lot of health problems, a lot of stomach problems. I still do to this day. I have a lot of stomach problems. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. A lot of things happened to me. Uh, in fact, I'll tell that story too. I, they, oh, I can't say that. Um, Why? I can't. Uh, We're not liking that, are we? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, long story short, I had, um, I had times where they, okay, I fell and I hurt my foot really, really bad. Okay. And um, they were doctors, right? So I went and I went to them. And uh, they, they he, both of them were direct do doctors. They were doctors. I'm not going to say what kind of doctors they were, but they okay. were doctors. So anyway, he, uh, I went to him because she wasn't actually practicing at the time. She was too busy, you know, attacking people with witchcraft. <laughs> so That's anyway, awesome. yeah, that was her full time job. Um, and uh, he hurt me. He hurt me a lot. Um, now I'm losing my train of thought of what I was going to say. You went to the doctor because your feet hurt. You hurt your I foot. fell. That was it. I fell. Okay. And I, and I just mentioned to her when we were exercising one night that I, that I fell and I hurt my foot. She's like, oh, you know, you should come and see him. He'll take care of it. And I didn't want to, but I felt obligated. Now you got to understand at this time that I just thought this chick was my friend. I had no idea that the things that were happening to me were perpetrated by them. Right. Because at the time, I didn't believe in witchcraft. I didn't, it wasn't even a thought in my mind. Right. I didn't right. know what was wrong with me. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So anyway, totally. I go to him, and uh, it was not good, you know. And um, Did he make it worse? In fact, at first, I didn't go to him. And then I remember going to church the following week. I'm sorry that I'm moving so much. <laughs> I, I went to church the following week, and there were stairs. There were stairs going down. And um, and. I was actually going up the stairs Duh. and I fell. I was fine. And it was just like, boom, I just went forward. And it was like, they did it, you know? Um, and so I ended up going there. Did you think it that, at that time or no? No, I, okay. had, no, I, still not I had no idea. But because I was hurt a second time, um, I just ended up going to them. So he did a lot more damage than good. Uh, and I ended up going orthopedic surgeon and, and they helped me. Did you um, think that he was a witch too? Well, I know that he is now, but I had no idea at the time. What so the do you, heck did, I just do you did, think he might have done something to you with your foot? Oh, he was hurting me. He, he's like, I go, well, why does he have to hurt so bad? He's like, well, no pain, no gain, you know? Um, yeah, it was not good. Okay. Um, and I, so here's the goodness of the story that God does. So honestly, for, I have had problems with my feet, even before them, I had problems with my feet. Um, I would say probably for the last 30 years. And I just recently went to, um, and I can't remember the name of their organization, but you can look him up. His name is Patrick Campbell. Um, and I went to a, uh, like a little conference, I guess, that he had October of last year. And my feet are fine. I was totally healed at that conference. Praise um, God. Yeah. Thank God. Something so went right. So seeing good always comes out of bad. <laughs> it took a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So when did you start putting two and two together? After well, that after book? I moved, after I had the priest and my friends say they're witches, you know, and then I read that book and I'm like, okay, so wow, maybe they are into witchcraft. And then I started to do a lot more research into Catholic books and stuff. Um, and yeah. And it, then you started it's, delivering it's been them? been a, a healing journey. Well, I, I started what? Delivering the spirits, you know, are you now No way. Back? Years. That was years. I was just going to church. I was going to adoration. I was praying. And one day when I was in church, uh, St. Teresa of Lisieux. That's just, my confirmation, Yeah, saying. My daughter, too. Yeah. Um, she just, it, it, there was just like the stained glass window of St. Therese, and I just heard her. I, I just felt, I kept hearing book, 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 book. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, maybe I should write a book about my experience. And so I did. And it ah. took me years to write the book. I'm not going to lie. Um, but those years were very, it was about my healing yeah. It was about my healing. It was about finding God. It was about learning about all of these things so I could help other people. And that's why I wrote it. I wrote it to help other people who are suffering like I suffered. And it's really terrible. Yeah. So what can you, you know, how do you tell the viewers what they should look out for or 
you know, from being attacked, because I would never think, like you, that someone who's faking Kath, being a Catholic, or maybe right. she was a Catholic and was still a witch, right. you know, um, I don't know, give us some thoughts and things to look out for so that none of us fall for something like that. Okay, so, well, first of all, I want to say that I didn't do anything to bring that on. It was innocent, totally innocent, and God allowed it. And maybe he allowed it for this purpose so I could write this book and help other people. So some people get attacked by witchcraft really because of no fault of their own, okay? Other people get attacked by witchcraft because, well, because they're doing New Age or occult things, right? Um, because they're doing drugs or alcohol or... Committing mortal sin. You know, committing mortal sin, yeah. Well, those things might be mortal sins. I mean, I guess you could say, if you're fully aware. Um, yeah, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I just met this person. And like an idiot, I trusted her. And mm -hmm. I shouldn't have. Yeah. I shouldn't have trusted her. Has that um, changed the way that you... Absolutely. Like, yeah, see people today? Absolutely. Well, yes, it, you know, I sit away from people at the church. Yeah, she does. I don't shake hands. I'm, that's one thing that they don't shake hands anymore, and I'm not disappointed about that. Um, Why? Because, because I don't want anybody touching me. Right. Okay? So that these, okay. She never touched me. Thank God. God, she never touched me, but I watched her touch other people. There was a woman that came once. Uh, I, I only met this person once at, at this witch's house, okay? And she um, she was an old lady. I know. She was an <laughs> old lady, and she was very, very sick. And she laid down on the floor, and it was always dark. It was just always weird, you know? And she prayed. She, like... Well, she didn't really pray over her. She's probably cursing her, but she had her hands all over her. Oh, and I stood gosh. back. I didn't, and I just kept thinking, what is happening? Like, this is very weird. Like, what? And that lady was very sick. Did she say anything? Was she praying in tongues, so to speak? Or was she, she only did, she only English? did that once and it wasn't really tongues. It was some kind of evil thing. Um, that was another weird night at her house, uh, with a bunch of people. And that never happened. It was usually just a few of us. You know, it wasn't. It was either just the two of us or it was just either the three of us, you know, me, Angela, and her. Um, wow. And I don't know why I ever stayed there as long as I did because there were signs and signs and and I just didn't pick up on it. Yeah. I, just, I just thought that she was going to help me learn. But anyway, when I moved away from her and I saw, you know, Angela, um, that was the beginning, yeah. you know. It was still a long time to get here, but a, a beginning. And so when did I learn about, I got to really think back, when did I learn about those prayers? I do remember when, I can't, I can't remember exactly the date, date yeah, dates or, or the that, year yeah. or anything like that. Um, but it was through a, a, another prayer group that God had called me to. And I knew that he had called me to, and I knew that they were going to help us. And they really did help us mm. uh, a lot. And, uh, they're like, oh, you just got to bind the spirit three times. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't want to do it wrong, right? right? So then again, I started investigating, investigating. Um, and I learned about that through, was it Father de Grandis? I can't remember his first name. He's passed away now. Um, but I used to pray his prayer all the time back then. When my kids had problems, like, by this time, my kids are in their teenage years, you know? And we're experiencing all kinds of different things. Still in the new house, but experiencing some, some different Things. I'm not saying demonic things in my house, just, you know, odd things. Um, and so we would pray. Whenever there was a problem, we would just pray Father to ground us this prayer. Um, and I would sprinkle the house with holy water because I had learned about that. And I would. Yeah, oh, no holy doubt. Holy water, yeah. blessed salt. Blessed salt, holy you know. oil, yeah. And then later on, I learned about exercised uh, salt, salt and, and oil exercised and oil and exercised water. What's the difference for those who are listening? It's just more. It's just more powerful, right? I, and, and, and it seems like Gosh, such a stop strange. Stop farting! Oh. It seems like such a strange stop thing to say. But like Father Ripperger talks about, like if you light a blessed candle, did we light the blessed candle? We should really we did light not. that. Mm. I brought we did a blessed not. candle. You brought a blessed candle. candle An exercise blessed candle, right? Um, he said, like, if you light a, a candle that uh, has an exorcism blessing on it, that demons just have to flee. 
they have to go. They can't stay. You know, not that they're hanging out in the house all the time, but right. hey, they could be. You know, if oh, if you got a kid in the house doing, um, well, anything. Let's just say pornography, um, new age stuff, which is occult. That's the occult, and you don't know about it. Mm -hmm. That's an open door in your house, right? And demons can be there. Demons are there as far as I'm concerned. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so if you have teenagers, make sure you go in there with holy water a lot of the times and pray special prayers you know what? to cast Search them out. Search the room. Yeah. This is the problem with parents today. Oh, I don't want to look through my kid's stuff. Look through your kid's stuff. <laughs> it could save you guys a lot of problems. Yeah. I mean, be parents. That's what I say. You have yeah. to be parents. Because nowadays, parents aren't always parents. Sorry. Right. But they're not. And some parents... Some institutions, as we know, are trying to tell your children not to go to your parents. So make sure that you check their phones <laughs> the and really get into their get into their kitchen, so to speak. You know? Yeah. Like, honestly, I wouldn't, like, read my kid's journal, but, like, my, son, <laughs> my son upset. You probably would. Yeah. So back to helping everyone identify things that they're not paying attention to. This is one of the things I say all the time. We live 95% mm. of our lives in a, in a subconscious state and only 5% conscious. Try this. When you're in the shower, shower the other way. Go down to top. <coughs> do your hair the, the different way. Brush your teeth with the other hand. Do everything wrong. Sleep on the other side of the bed. You will see how much mental capacity you have to put into shaving your face with the wrong hand. You're funny. You know? Oh, my <coughs> gosh. She did it again. Oh. Dude. Kendra, I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I got, put her down. Put her over here. Oh, my gosh. What are you feeding this dog? It's the same stuff. Look at her. Look at this little <laughs> Oh, now that we got the smoke bomb out of here, we can talk. We had to fan no, it, as you saw on the fast speed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so tell people how can they... Keep an eye out. Well, hello, Stinky. Oh. <laughs> you need to go. Come here, baby. Oh, Lord. Go, Nai Nai. Go, Nai Nai. Oh, my gosh. Just please don't fart anymore, okay? <laughs> if she does, I'm out of here. I know, right? That'll be the, the end of the end of the end. Okay, go, go Nai Nai. We're such a little mama's girl. Okay. okay, so when people are out there, what should they keep an eye out for? So, number one, you said... New Age stuff. New Age, what is it? It's anything that isn't mm -hmm. looking at Jesus Christ and the Holy Trinity as God, right? The Savior of the world. Anything around that. Well, like, you know, crystals and yeah. Reiki and even Harry Potter, because yeah. there are actual okay. prayers in there that are curses. Look at you. Please well, don't you know, and, and also think about what are you watching on TV? Mm -hmm. I mean, all these, like, horror films... Uh, shows that are called evil yeah I mean, so i wrote an article about it but there was um, where can they find your articles by the way yeah my website is uh, called conquer the devil.com beautiful and so i wrote an article my husband and i were sitting we were just watching tv one night and i thought oh let's watch this because he likes scary stuff but for the 40 years we've been married he's not allowed to watch anything scary in the house <laughs> and neither is my son-in-law because my daughter and i just won't do it i'm so, with you Anyway, I didn't think it was going to be like scary, scary, but it was it was a, a, a show um, about this girl and she moves into this apartment. And so anyway, she's in this apartment and she's sleeping and they show like a like a vent, you know, on the side of the wall. And all of a sudden the most horrific music that I ever heard it was so eerie and it was so scary. And at that moment, I literally felt so much evil just fill the room of my house like really? I could feel it it was very familiar because I'd felt it before uh, you know and I was like I was like okay immediately shut this off I could literally feel my guardian angel pushing on my back and I knew I'm like okay whoa you got to turn this off right now and so I shut it off and I went upstairs and I went to bed and it was just like before, really? um, like I was, I was like, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to sleep. This is, this is just a horrible feeling. And I said, okay, God, I'm just going to, I'm going to go back to sleep. I'm going to try to go back to sleep. And if, and if it happens again, I'm going to get up. And within, I mean, one minute, I was like, okay, that's it. And I went downstairs and I prayed Father Ripperger's, uh 
deliverance prayers. Wow. And it all went away. Hmm. And it all went away. And Amen. I was fine and it was normal again. But that was a huge reminder of what actually happened to me for all those years. Really? Because you felt it didn't go way. away before. But now now it, it does because I'm because I'm a, I'm a stronger. Mm -hmm. You're more you're wiser. I'm stronger. I'm wiser. I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah. That's huge. I'm not afraid anymore. That's huge. Yeah. Praise God for mm -hmm. that. Um you know, it's called tell a vision, tell a vision. You have <laughs> channels, you are channeling evil spirits. And guess what? Mm -hmm. They have programs which are programming you because we just mm -hmm. endlessly watch TV. I don't even watch TV anymore. I'm giving my big screen over there to my son. I mean, mm -hmm. I have a lot of podcasts and you can learn so much. All you have to do is go search spiritual warfare, deliverance, and right. you will find a ton. Yeah. There's a guy out there, too. Um, he has a podcast. His name is Dave Van Vickle. Uh, V-A-N-V-I-C-K-L-E. I can't remember. Um, the whole, Just look up Dave Van Vickle. You can join his podcast. Uh, is it on YouTube or Spotify? or? I I don't know. He just okay. sends me a link, and uh, I'm on it. You know okay. what I mean? So Go to the search He's engine. another one, Dave Van Vickle, and he's familiar with he, – he works with exorcists. So um, he has a lot to learn, too. And you, you know, what would I say to somebody who is being attacked by witchcraft? You need to know, you, you need to become aware. That's why I write on my blog for people. And that's why I wrote the book. You know, if you if your personality suddenly changes, like say you've met someone new, mm. you know, and your personality changes or you just don't feel like yourself anymore. You're starting to have fear you you're isolating yourself like i didn't want to leave my house i didn't want to leave and i didn't for a long time wow um i didn't i isolated myself i was sad i cried the anxiety was horrible then i started having health problems you know these are all the effects of um well they're effects of witchcraft but it's the effects of the demonic i guess you could say right it's the effects of the demonic you know basically what they're what they're I hate to use the word prayers, but I don't know what curses or whatever yeah, cantations curses. they did. Yeah. Sent those demons to me, and they were attached to me. They were attached to me. So when you went to confession, as we know, when we go to confession, we have mortal sin. We're, you know, getting that. We're <clears throat> contrite. We're truly repentant. We don't want to do it again, even though we may fall. Those demons that are attached to you are completely unhooked. They're gone. So did anything happen in confession with you, even though you didn't do anything that you nope. brought in? Okay. No, nope. I just just went to confession all the time. Yeah. Because I I just had to. Mm -hmm. I just felt like, not that I was, you know, sinning every day. Well, of course we all sin every day. But I mean, I just, I needed the sacraments. Yeah. So I needed the Eucharist. I, 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 I needed confession. I went on a regular basis. I was always thinking, you're such a horrible sinner. I would think that I that I said the Lord's name in vain when I didn't. Right. You know what I mean? I would have all these like, because these demons, they're whispering. They're constantly uh. whispering in your ear. You know, the thoughts in my mind were, it was horrible. Like blasphemies would just fill my mind and it uh. would not go away. Wow. And I'm like, why doesn't it stop? It needs to stop. And I couldn't make it stop. That's demonic. That's yeah. not you. And that's, that's demonic. That's probably a spirit of obsession, right? Yeah. Spirit of obsession, I guess. You know, and oppression, I was totally oppressed. I mean, I couldn't, I left my house to go to church, to go to adoration and just take care of my kids, go to the grocery store. I didn't, that was it. So can you help them understand what oppression is? Well, everything I just described to you is oppression. <laughs> you know, um, you can't function, you can't think, you can't talk. It was hard for me to spit a sentence out of my mouth. My parents were like, what's wrong with her? Mm. They really noticed. And, and, and my husband did, yeah, eventually start to notice that something was up. But, you know, it's every day, you know, when you're living your life. And I just had to live my life. I just had to accept the fact that, okay, these things are happening to me, and I just have to push through it, and I have to take care of I have children. I have a husband. I, I have a family, you know, and I just accepted it. Yeah. And that's what I had to do. And oppression is also can come from relationships and people that you know. So that's kind of what came her way with this, this witch. <clears throat> and it's real. One of the things that I had a difficult time with was, A, I was not at 
the level of spiritual warfare. I was still in my Jesus la la land where everything was beautiful, even though I was having, you know, fearful thoughts and I was crying all the time in my ministry. I never understood that there are people out there who want to hurt you. I, I went, so when Wendy told me all about this and I read her book, I was thinking, Ooh. oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, why would anyone want to do that? Mm. Why would anyone want to do that to someone? And there are people out there who get power yeah, that's, by doing that. That's what I'm sitting here thinking. It's a power, right? So earlier I said when they were either looking for their prey, right? Or they were looking for something they could just pull over to their other side. And how do they do that? You know, those people actually do have power from the devil. They can't mm -hmm. do that on their own. Just like we get power from, you know, confirmation from the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they're getting power from the devil. And some people, when they see that work, they're like, Ooh, this is cool. How do you think they get kids? Mm -hmm. You know, don't you remember when you were a kid and you, and you did like, you know, Oh, what was that game where you could Light it to feather. Yeah. You see yes. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Confess that. I've confessed it. I didn't know it was bad. Me neither. You know, or the worst of all is Bloody Mary. Like, I did that that's too. actually, like, these are demonic things that kids have no idea. Yep. You have to talk to them about that stuff. And you know what? Sit down, get a piece of paper, ask the Holy Spirit, help me remember. What did I do? Did, did I wear I, a mood did, ring? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, I wore yeah, a mood me ring. Me too. I mean, you know, I had the horn. I'm Italian. I had the horn. That's that's bad. I didn't. I didn't know. know that. I had no idea. I oh had my no gosh, idea. I had no idea about that. Yeah, that's bad. And look at look at how we were kind of programmed to think that you know witches with the the TV show Bewitched. If you ever watch that, and then there was one that came after with Charmed. Uh, Charmed yeah, Charmed. and then there was another one. I don't know where the cat was black and it talked and it looked like the scariest oh, little yeah, yeah. stuffed animal I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, just you know, and uh, again. It looks made up. Look at the Wizard of Oz, you know? They're uh, like, yeah, do I, you really think it's real? Yes, it is, but they don't look like that. They're real people. Oh my gosh, she did it again. Oh, well, we're pausing. Pause. <laughs> we need to pause. I'm walking away. Come on, pause. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> this dog would not go poop either, so I don't know, but something evil is coming out of her. We, <laughs> we were thinking maybe, maybe the evil one is working through her. Oh, go back to bed, baby. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up with talking about some things that you can look out for. Um, we were talking about, like... You're going to bite that, aren't you? Uh, let's see. We were talking about taking things from other people, even if it's yeah. a religious item. So tell them a little right. bit about what happened. So that was kind of one of the things that, that this witch would do is uh, say, Oh, look at this. Look, I got this you know, rosary, or I got this book, or I got this card, you know, or I would bring something to her and say, oh, can I, can I hold on to that for a while? And then I'd either never get it back, or I think I would just get it back cursed. So when I did realize um, that I did have objects that were cursed, I, I, I researched, well, yeah. you know, I got rid of them, basically. Found out how to do it the correct way later. But, um, how do you yeah, you know, don't, don't accept things from, from, from people. You know, oh. she did it again. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> this is gonna take us three hours to get done. It is bad. All right, wait. You know, and that's another thing too that that just hit me. She no, no, she no, was no. always probing me for information. Oh yeah. You oh. know, probing me for information. Um, wanting to know about my personal life, you know, and think about it. When you have a friend, you know, you talk about things. We talked about things. Absolutely. You, you know what I mean? And then she would use those things, you know, against me. Um, so that's another thing. I mean, I, I can't necessarily tell you exactly how to spot a witch. You know what I mean? Go down there. But, you know, just don't... Don't read New Age books. Don't have New Age things. You know, don't be so chatty all the time with someone that you don't know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I and mean, that's really important. That's really important to know. And one of the things we were talking about, too, is the state of the world today and how it's so <clears throat> godless. No God. So many people have no God. Suicide rates are so high. So many kids are on medication for depression. You know, so many people just, they don't go to church. You know, and even if they do, if they're not practicing it at home, 
you know, it's just something that the kid has to do. You know what I mean? Right. Um, like me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I didn't know anything about yeah. the faith until I was 42 years old. Right. And I think about my life and how I was into drinking and drugs and me, 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 me. I never donated to anybody. I made a lot yeah. of money. It was just... The you know, I, I, I thing all yeah. the time. Me, me, you know, all these kids taking their pictures, walking around naked half the time. It's, it's, uh, it's not good. It's an open door. Mm -hmm. It's all an open door. You know what? You have to live a holy life. I'm not saying that you have to go to church every single day like me. People can't, you know, not all people can do that. Um, but the sacraments are how, the sacraments are how I was healed. Yeah, the sacraments were how I was healed. The Eucharist, I would have, I, 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 I couldn't have survived without the Eucharist every day. I couldn't have, I couldn't have done it. Um, and it's so, really important. You know, in the end, you didn't ask for this. God no. allowed this to happen God to you. God allowed it to happen. So you heard the word book, 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 mm -hmm. and that took me years to write that book. I know. Yeah, I know. Years. And I'm so glad that it's finally going to come out. Mm -hmm. Follow her on conquerthedevil.com. Pray for her because this is really like going out and showing all the evil yeah. one's tactics and he doesn't want that. Okay, you got to yeah. go down, girl. And you know, the, the book is, it's a testimony, really. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a testimony. And, and you know, the, I think the first half of the book is about what happened to me. But the best part of the book is where it brought me. Right. And where it can bring anybody. You know, you don't have to be attacked by witchcraft or demons to find God and to love him and to give him all of yourself and to live a good and holy life. And that's, I mean, that's the greatest part of everything right. in that book, man, I'm telling you right now. I can't imagine how intensely focused you were on him. There was no one else that could help me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find a priest that helped me. I didn't tell my family, my husband, my kids. I wasn't going to like, oh, yeah, you know, all these weird things are happening in my house. No. Um, he was all I had. Yeah. He was, all I, he was all I had. He was everything, you know. And I didn't feel him. I felt no God. I thought God hated me. I, I, I wanted to die. I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't want to feel that way anymore. And I thought God deserted me and hated me. Wow. I did. And that's, you know, that's a that's part of it. That's the evil one. That's a part of it. <laughs> You know, so people that are sad and lonely and depressed or think that God doesn't love them, God loves you so much. Yeah. And he never left my side for one second. Not for one second. You know, and honestly, after, after, after I moved out of that house and moved into the new house and was on this journey, I had so much more peace. And I was able to sit in the church for, I would sit in the church for an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, just sit there. And God just, I felt him then, and he was so present, and it was, yeah, so it was awesome. just incredible, and it was amazing. And he gave me the strength, and I, you know, they say that, everyone knows this, oh, God can only give you as much as you can handle. Well, let me tell you, I didn't think I could handle that. Right. And I, thank God I lived through it. It was because I had God. And then that takes me back to the people who, who don't. You know, I remember being a kid, and I remember hanging out with some people that I shouldn't have, you know, hung out with. And yeah, we were smoking pot. We were doing stuff we shouldn't have done. <laughs> Not at the same time, you know? but yes, that was But I remember point. going, there was a couple of different places, and I remember. So when I went to these three different places, when I was a teenager, right, when I was opening a door, when I probably most likely wasn't in a state of grace, you know, oh, we're going to go to this person's house and get high, this, that, or the other thing. The evil I felt there, I'm telling you, that's the kind of evil I felt around me. It was so thick and so present. And I remember literally saying to myself in those moments when I was young, get out of here. Something is wrong. That's crazy. Like something's super wrong. But when it happens in your own house, and, and again, I did, I did, it took me a long time to figure out it was evil. I just thought I was going losing my mind. I was going crazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, priests. <laughs> The priest, I don't care if you're Catholic or not. If you're having something like this wrong with you, go see a priest. Talk to a priest. Um, hopefully it's a priest that believes in deliverance. Hopefully it's a priest that can help you. Or hopefully it's a priest that will direct you to a priest that can help you. Priests will help you. Yeah. If it wasn't for the priest, I wouldn't have Jesus. And if I didn't have Jesus, 
I wouldn't be here right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. That is a beautiful ending. Yeah. It really is. I mean, I'm so proud of you for yeah. writing this book. It's not easy, number fun. one, because you're throwing out all of the Satan's ploys mm -hmm. and people need to know. Number two, I know how hard it was and how you want this to be such a success, but I guarantee you it will be. Well, I don't even know if, I, if it's about it being a success. It's about helping people to understand and bringing people to God. Right. That's, Successfully. That's, that's what I well, mean. Well, yeah, I know. I'm not talking about money or anything yeah, like right, that, right. but make it be a big, huge, you know, pull for people to right. really understand because that's the only way you're going to be able to fight this. Mm -hmm. Spiritual war is by knowing how to fight, and right. you're telling your story. And tonight, today, I guess I should say, we haven't been there that long where it's night, but we also wanted to make it like her and I hang yeah. out, which means the dog is going to be in our way. <laughs> I guess he never farted once. Oh the my whole gosh, time. the whole time we were there, he did, and today was today was horrible. Not good. I mean, it was like eye burning kind of stuff. <laughs> so, so we wanted to, you know, just make it be like we were together and. I really hope that you go to Conquer the Devil, look at all of her yeah. articles that are already out there, and then yeah. I will put this out as soon as I can, and then we'll keep an eye out, and you you better believe that I will tell you when that book is available and send you all Thank away. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And well, on the website, there's, there's specific articles on depression, isolation. Um, you'll see. Awesome. How to recognize an attack. You'll see it. And Wendy writes very... Like she talks, you know, it's just very easy to read um, all of her articles. It's just uh, commonsensical. I hope so. And I mean, I know that you're going to help, uh, help a lot of people. I hope so. Let's all pray for Wendy. Actually, we ended up, uh, after the last part, we ended up lighting <laughs> the blessed we candle did. <laughs> for the very last segment. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Wendy, for Thanks. actually Thanks for having me. I appreciate it very all the time. much. If you want her back and you have questions, we can do this again. Mm -hmm. Just put some comments in the bottom, and I will see you later. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body. And have a blessed and inspired day. Thank you again so Fine. much. Thank you. I love you, girl. Me too.